Man, screw our control. This is an awesome game. You beautiful creature. Four. Last time you did that, I ended up playing air control. Just taking precautions. Okay, fair enough. But I need your help with something. Well, you don't even know what I'm going to say! Last time I helped you, I ended up playing air control. Just taking precautions. I know, I know. But I assure you, this game isn't as bad as the last one. I don't think any game could be as bad as that one. That's what you think. What? I said here it is. How to Train Your Dragon? The DreamWorks movie? Man, how can a game based around that be any bad? You've piqued my curiosity. Fine, I'll play your damn game. But it's better not become a habit of yours, alright? No, of course not. <laughs> What was that? Nothing. How to Train Your Dragon for Nintendo DS, released in 2010 by Kryptonite Games, who weirdly specialize in tie-in games, mainly movie tie-ins. Either those many games have turned them into professionals in their domain, or they can't think of anything better to do. This game is of course a follow-up to the DreamWorks smash hit How to Train Your Dragon, which is claimed to be one of the best DreamWorks movies ever made. And seeing their lineup of work, that's a pretty good title. And like with everything that makes the money world go around, you always find a few leeches trying to suck up those lost pennies. Hopefully this game isn't like that, but best to be precautious. So we have the choice between two characters, Hiccup, with his trusty Night Fury Toothless, and Astrid! Jesus Christ in the boss lid, what the hell is that? Astrid? You, um... You feeling okay, love? I mean, it looks like you just took a jug of acid to the face, so I'm a little worried. Uh, we're just going to go with Hiccup. And I can customize Toothless? Okay then. Didn't know genetic remodeling made so much progress over the years. Especially in the Viking era. Now I usually act in a funding games mindset when it comes to this, but no more! No more. This is serious. With great power comes great responsibility. Did you really just rip off Spider-Man? This dragon came to me, so I could bestow upon him the body that will grant him the respect he deserves. I must tread carefully and concentrate on making this dragon perfect, beautiful, dignified. Oh, nope, wait, there's bunny teeth. Sorry mate, you are now my test subject. Okay, on a more serious note now, this is one of the weirdest character customizations I've ever had the pleasure of experimenting with. I, I just don't get half of it. I mean, you have your generic stuff like demon horns, spiky tails, spikes on the back. And now I think about it, how exactly are people supposed to ride you with those, but what the hell. But then you have bunny teeth and toothpick wings and is, is that, is, is that a spatula tail? Is, is that a That's a tail! That's a spatula, is it? You just tied a spatula to your dragon's tail, didn't you? Don't hide it. You saw every other dragon has something cool dangling off their tails, and you did what you had, didn't you? Didn't you? Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm about to create an abomination of a dragon. Be right back. There we go. Doesn't he just look ravishing? With his buck teeth, toothpick wings, toe in the middle of his car, spatula tied to his tail, some boat sail I found in my attic, and the shiniest shade of pink this side of BronyCon. I am an artist. Now we just have to name you. Toothless. Hey. Hey. I can't name him Toothless? Oh, come on. You could have at least given me enough characters to give him his real name. Fine. Looks like I have to be a bit more original than that. Hmm. Butchula. Perfect. Buckchilla, Queen of the Toothpicks. Yeah, someone make a Yu-Gi-Oh card out of that. Now that we have our dragon, we can adventure in the realm of Burke. Hiccup? Where have you been? Wherever you are, woman! So the plot takes place one year after the Red Death's defeat. Yeah, that thing. Everything is hunky-dory with the dragons now. The birds are singing, the sun is shining, even though it's supposed to snow all year, and everyone is happy. 
So naturally, now that the Great War between Dragons and Vikings is over, and peace reigns supreme, there is only one true way to go. Make the dragons fight to the death! Okay, there's a bit more context than that. Apparently, they have suddenly no one to take care of the dragons. So instead of taking the logical route and have the kid who basically created this alliance to save Dragon's Bust from Fiery Death to take care of them, Stoic decides that a tournament shall be held that will pit Dragon Tamer against Dragon Tamer to decide who will be Dragon Master for the year. So wait, 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 wait. The reward for winning the tournament is chores? Stoic, I don't think you quite grasped the concept of a reward yet, but we'll, we'll talk about that later, don't worry. Right now, we have to think about how we're going to turn Buttula into a lean, mean slaying machine, as Stoic asks us to fight his dragon as a demonstration. The combat in this game is pretty original, it must be said. There are six kind of dragons. Night Furies, Deadly Nadders, Gronkles, who just don't give a fluff, Monstrous Nightmares, Hideous Zipplebacks, who just don't respect the movie at all, and Grapple Grounders. Guess the terrible terror didn't quite reach their expectations. That's a high joke, people. Each breed of dragon has a different moveset and a meter at the bottom. As a Night Fury, Buckler can shoot fire, claw his enemies, whack him with the spatula tail, etc, etc. Each attack consumes some of the meter to be performed, and depending on the power of the attack, more or less of the meter will be taken. Once the meter is full, you can attack again. This adds another layer of death to the battles. You can either choose to use weaker attacks, but attack multiple times, or go for the heavy hits, in exchange for being used as target practice by the enemy dragon. Something to also take into account are status ailments and boosts. Moves can inflict certain status conditions like burn, wound, break, or weaken. These can do all kinds of nasty things to your creature, like damage it over time, lower stack of defense, or stop the meter from charging. And on the flip side of the coin, some moves grant certain boosts, like evasion, haste, or protect, which allows your dragon to dodge all incoming attacks, have his meter fill up twice as fast, or just not take any damage whatsoever. Kind of OP if you ask me. All this makes the combat in this game pretty interesting, I must admit. I don't remember another game that does turn-based combat quite like this. I like it. Anyway, Buckshot wipes the floor with this dragon, and since Daddy forced us to battle it, we have to repair his armor because we damaged it. Make up your mind, old man. Making armor is as simple as a minigame. Five to be exact. The better you do in each minigame, the better your armor will be. The last kind of minigame is the Galaga Climbing Obstacle Course! <laughs> Where you ride your dragon, apparently this thing is rideable, and have to dodge flying barrels, grab coins, and burn your brother into the bare bone! I mean, Jesus! There's no beating around the bush here! I'm just slaughtering every dragon I come across! The ecosystem of this island must be ruined! Look at all these lives lost! Although, judging by how they act, I think I might be doing them a favor. Now I'm just gonna come clean. This minigame is the worst by far. The controls are messed up to no end. I have nearly no control over my dragon, I can't feel any weight behind it. I mean, I'm flying a dragon, not a paper airplane, I shouldn't feel this sloppy. Honestly, it feels like I'm skating on an ice rink. Now, you may be wondering to yourself, where does the game get bad? I mean, the graphics are nice and the gameplay is pretty cool. Most of the time. So where's the problem? Well, the problem is, I don't have much else to talk about really. Seeing as I basically just described what you're going to be doing for the next 10 hours playing this game. All you do in this game. Let, let, let me emphasize on that. All you do in this game is fight dragons. Over and over and over again. Nothing new, nothing more than fighting dragons. There is literally nothing else to this game. No objectives, no side missions, no exploration of the Isle of Burke, nada! You just fight the same six kind of dragons all day, all night, and all the time in between. And the game tries very hard to hide the fact that there is nothing else happening. The quests tell you to fetch banners, find lost dragons, hunt down schematic thieving squirrels. That one sounds a lot this epic, I must admit. But all that is just a cover up for fight this dragon, fight that dragon, fight another dragon, fight all the dragons, dragons everywhere! And I wouldn't mind so much if the battles were only short. Okay, I wouldn't mind, but at least it wouldn't take a toll on my sanity. But battles in this game go on forever! Each battle can last easily between 5 to 10 minutes. I'm not just talking about key dragons or boss dragons, no, no, no. 
while dragons that are just in the way can take twice as long to beat than it took to do the entire quest. Grunkles are the worst! Those guys would just eat up all the hits like it was their goddamn Sunday brunch! Oh, what? what is, is that a British thing? The, the Americans won't get it? Uh, okay, scratch that joke, scratch that joke. These guys are everywhere! I can't take two steps without being invaded by dragons! Look at this! They've literally swarmed me! I can't go anywhere without finding a dragon for 10 minutes! And most of the time, after you've beaten a dragon, more appear! God damn, leave me alone! It's like if in Pokemon, you had to fight a canopy for 10 minutes! IN EVERY SINGLE PATCH OF GRASS! Now you may be asking yourself, why not just run away? That would be easier, wouldn't it? Well, there are two reasons why that is impossible. First off, you have to beat a stupid minigame just to have a chance to run away. And I swear to God, this thing is broken. You have to hit the ball before it leaves the screen, but when I do hit it, it just ignores me and carries on its merry way. Damn it! Son of a... Jesus Christ, why isn't this working? I'm hitting the ding dang dong ball, but it won't register! And... And... and, and, and why am I even doing this? Why do I have to beat a minigame just to run away? And every time you fail, you don't just get to try again after the enemy's turn. Oh, no, 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 that would be too easy, that would be too easy. Your meter goes all the way down, and you have to wait for the damn thing to fill up again. And in the meantime, the other dragon just keeps on wailing at you again and again and again. It could have just stopped here. Or here. BUT NOT HERE! And you wanna know what the worst part is? What the absolute worst part of this running away system is? It's that once you finally manage to run away... You're right back where you started! And so is he! So what was the point of any of this?! What was the point of running away if I have to fight the dragon anyway?! Was it to waste my time or something?! Wait a second... Here it is! It is to waste my time! Time. Between going back and forth, finding dragons for 10 minutes every time I take a step, farming dragons to get the items I want, and not being able to run away, everything in this game is to waste my time. This is padding. It's a technique developers use to artificially elongate the lifespan of a game by making you think what you're doing is for a greater goal, when in reality, it could just as easily be cut out from the game. This is like grinding for levels in a Final Fantasy, or backtracking in Castlevania 2 or Metroid. It makes you believe you're moving forward, when in reality you're at a standstill. Except in those games, the padding game ratio is like this. Or this. In this game, it's like this. This game isn't bad the way you think it is. In fact, it has all the foundations for a good game. The graphics are decent for what they had to work with, each kind of dragon is unique in its own way, and the combat is pretty original and fun. For the first five minutes. But the problems start once you realize there is nothing to this game, there's no meat to the bone. You're forced to fight the same dragons over and over again without any choice or meaning. Sure, they try to justify it, but once you realize the loop this game keeps on playing, you get tired of it extremely quickly. The minigames try to shake it up a bit, but either they're too short to be of any consequence, or they're too broken to be any fun. And once you add that to the shameless padding, you're stuck with a game that gets stale in the first 10 minutes. This game could have been good, it has all the potential to be good. You just need that little something, add a little extra spice to make it more worthwhile. When it comes to movie license games, this is not the worst game, by far. In fact, I'd say it's one of the better ones. But as a standalone game, uh, there are plenty of other games more worth your time than this. Pokemon for one. But we can't just end it like this. Nah. This game needs to go out with a bang. Toothless! Come here, boy! See that game? You see that game? Go get it! Oh! Right out of ballpark! Way to go, Toothless! Way to go! Bravo! Let's no, 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 wait. Oh, god damn it! Oh my god. Oh my god, everything's burning. Oh, that's not good. Oh, that's not good. Oh, that's also good. That's very bad. That's very bad indeed. The cat, the cat, the cat is on fire. The cat is on fire. I don't even have the cat. Why is the cat on fire? Toothless, you suck!